In this video, we will learn how we can create a chat bot to chat with multiple PDFs documents using Palm 2 as our large language model, Pinecone as our vector database, and Langchain, which works as a framework to build large language model. Before we discuss the architecture, let me just give you a short preview about Google Palm API, which we will be using in this project. So Google Palm API is absolutely free alternative to OpenAI. You can build powerful applications using Palm API for free and it comes with its own embedding model as well. So Google Palm uh, API comes with its own embedding model as well like OpenAI. OpenAI also provide embedding model as well but OpenAI has a cost associated while Google Palm API is free and its embedding model, embedding model is free as well. And you can build information retrieval system and many other applications using Palm API as well. So Google Palm API is available as a part of the maker, Google Maker Suite. So I will show you as well how you can get your own API key as well. So let's get started. So first of all, this is the complete architecture. Let me explain you step by step. So in the first step, the user uploads multiple PDF files. You can upload three, four, five, ten 10 PDF files as well. So we cannot, uh, in the next step, the step number one, the user uploads the PDF files. In the step number two, we will extract the data from those PDF files. So we will be extracting all the data content that is inside this PDF file. So after extracting the data, we cannot pass the data directly to the our uh, Google Palm 2 model because the Google Palm 2 model has an input token limit like uh, it has an input token limit of 8196 tokens. So it means that it has an input token limit of 30, 32,000 English characters because 8,096 tokens, 8,196 tokens mean one token is equal to four English characters. So we have, we can pass maximum 32,000 English characters maximum at the input of Palm 2 model. So if we have tens of PDFs file and we extract the data from those PDF files, so they, after extracting the data, uh, that can be more than 32,000 English characters. So we have tens of PDF files and we extract the data from those PDF files. So it can be more than 32,000 English characters. So we cannot pass that data directly to our large language model, the Palm 2 model. So what we do is we split the data into small text chunks. So we create text chunk and we define a limit like each text chunk will have maximum 800 English characters or 1000 English characters. Then we create embeddings for each of the text chunk. So if we have 10 text chunk, for example, then we will create embedding for each of the text chunk and then we will have 10 embedding vectors as well. So what we do in embedding, embedding is basically used to compress the size of the text chunk. So embedding are basically used to compress the size of the text chunks. So if we have 10 text chunk, then we will have 10 embedding vectors as well. And this is how embedding look like. Embeddings are basically a uh, list of floating point numbers. So you can say that embedding is basically a list of floating point number. And you can say that 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. This is the form of embeddings which we have. Okay, embeddings are basically vector stores. Okay, that contain floating point numbers. So for each text chunk, we will create embedding. So uh, embedding basically used to compress the size of the text chunk. Then using all those embeddings which we have, we will build a semantic index. And after building the cementing and desk, we will create a knowledge base. In the knowledge base, we will store all these embeddings. So, okay. So we will build a vector database or vector store. We will, where I will store all the embeddings. So if we have 10 embeddings, or uh, we will store all those embeddings in the knowledge base or vector database. So we have different uh, vector databases available as well. So we have Fice, Facebook, AI, Similarity Search as a vector database. We have a Chroma DB as our vector database. So Chroma and Fice store the embeddings locally in our system. So, okay, so Chroma and Fice vector store store the embeddings locally in our system. While in this tutorial, I will be using Pinecone as our vector database. Pinecone store the embeddings in the cloud and anyone can assess those embeddings. So if you just use Fice or Chroma, they will store the embeddings locally and uh, Everyone cannot access those embeddings because it will be saved locally in your system. But Pinecone saves the embeddings in the cloud and, and you can anyone can index, uh, uh, assess those embeddings by using the index name. So we will be using Pinecone. So Pinecone saves the embeddings in the cloud and anyone can assess those embeddings. Okay, so if the user asks a question, 
So what will happen? The, when the user asks the question, we will create embeddings for those questions which can be in this uh, form. Then we do a semantic search. Okay, so after creating embeddings for this question, then we'll do a semantic search. We'll try to find top four answers for this question the user have asked in our knowledge base. So if the user has asked a question that we have uh, for the question that we have solution in our knowledge base. So if the user has asked a question from any of the PDF that uh, we have uploaded and we have extracted the data and converted into text chunks. So if the user asks a question from any of the uh, PDF, then we will look for the answer in the knowledge base and we will find 10 to 5, 4 to 5 relevant answers for that question from our knowledge base. Okay, so we will just rank top 4 answers that we get for that question in our knowledge base. Okay, then we will rank those answers like this is the closest, this is the most closest, and most closest answer to this question, this is the second most closest answer to this question, this is the third most closest answer to this question. Then we'll send those uh, responses, our uh, answers to our Farm2 model and Farm2 model will take the question directly as well and it will take the responses over from here as well and using Farm2 we will generate a natural response. So this is a complete architecture of how it works. Let's move towards the implementation part. So uh, you can just like the GPU as well, or you can simply use CPU as well. It all depends on your choice because we will be using a Lama uh, Palm 2 model through API, and it's your choice whether you use GPU or CPU. So we will just install all the required packages first. So this might take a few seconds for these packages to get installed. So we are using Langchain package. So Langchain works as a framework that allows us to build large language models. Then we have Pinecone because we are saving our embeddings in the cloud. So we require Pinecone uh, because Pinecone is our, works as a ve our vector database and help us to store the embeddings in the cloud. Then we have PyPDF package. So using PyPDF package, we can we will load the PDF file and extract the data from those PDF files. Then we have Google Generative AI. So we will be using this package so that we can download embedding models uh, or we can use uh, embedding model of Google Palm 2. Okay, so you assess the Google Palm 2 embedding model. So we can use Google Generative AI package. So why we need embedding model? Because we want to create embeddings for each of the text chunks. So to create embeddings for each of the text chunk, we need the embedding model to download the embeddings. Okay, so now we will import all the required libraries over here. So we are using Py PDF directory loader so that user can upload a PDF file and we can extract the data from those PDF files. Then we have recursive character text splitter so that we can split the text into small chunks using recursive character text splitter. So you can see that here we have split the text into small chunks. So we will be using recursive character splitter, text splitter to split the data into text chunk. Then we use Google Palm embedding so that we will create embeddings for each of the text chunk. Then we have Google Palm model so that we can uh, do a question answer using uh, Palm model, Google Palm model, and Google Palm model will generate a natural response. Then we have Pinecone. We Pinecone is our vector database where we will store our embeddings. Pinecone is, an, is works as a cloud vector database. Then we have retrieval QA so that, uh, for example, we are doing information retrieval. When the a user asks a question, we in, in, uh, we retrieve the information from the PDF files. Then we have prompt template. We will define a custom prompt template as well. Then we have Pinecone again because we are storing our embedding in a cloud database. Then we have import OS so that we can define our uh, Google uh, uh, Google Palm 2 API key. Then we have import sys so that we can exist from the chat. So now we will uh, just create a folder by the name PDFs over here. So now you can see PDF folder over here. So inside this PDF folder, currently it's empty. We will uh, download those PDFs. So I've already uh, uploaded these PDFs in my Google Drive and I have added links over here. So I'm directly downloading those PDFs from Google Drive into this PDFs folder. So into this my Google Colab notebook. So I'm directly downloading those PDFs from the Google Drive into that Google Colab notebook. So you can see that I have just uh, downloaded these PDFs over here. So let me just show you uh, how it works. So if I just open them over here. So this is the first PDF file. So you can see that this is a paper on YOLO v7 object detection model. So you can see that this is a 15 page long paper. And we have a second PDF file about this is a 
uh, age and it resume of Rachel Green. And you can see that here we have its qualification, uh, teaching experience, and we have its publications, different awards, which she, she, yeah, she has obtained during her uh, professional career. Okay, so, so now we will extract the data from those PDF files. You can upload tens of PDF files as well, like seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, it's all your choice. So we will extract the data from those PDF file and the data will be saved in the variable data, okay? So now here we are using uh, loading those PDF files and extracting the data from those PDF files. So you can see that we have extracted all the data from those PDF files. So this is a long data, okay? So if you want to see the data more clearly, you can just try it over here. So you can see that this is the data which we have extracted from those PDF file and it starts with from here. Yellow V7, trainable bag of freebies, new state of the art for real time detection. This is the name of the paper and it starts, goes and it ends with Rachel Green resume. It should end with Rachel Green resume. Okay, so now you can see that uh, this is ending with Rachel Green resume and you can associate, associate professor of English. And here you, you can see the qualification of Rachel Green. So that's the good. So this is clicking quite much space. So now after we have extracted all the data from those PDFs, we will split the data into small text chunks. Okay. So now we will just use recursive tractor text splitter and each text chunk will have maximum 500 English characters and there will be an overlap of 20 English characters. Okay. So now you can see over here and let me see how many text chunks we have. Okay. So so we have 168 text chunks. So now we can see that we have extracted the data from those PDF file and split the data into small text chunks. And we have total 168 text chunks. Okay. So now we will create embeddings for each of the text chunk. And over here, I've just passed my Google API key. So you can just go to right over here, Google Palm to API. And you can just go over here. Okay, and then you can just go to Google, go to Maker Suit. Uh, so Google Palm API is available under Google Maker Suit over here. And you can just uh, write over here, create an API key, create an API key for a new project. So you can see over here, you can just create an API key for a new project as well, or you can just use existing API key. So we have just created uh, multiple API keys over here. So I can just copy this and uh, you can get your own API key as well. For this, you have to first submit a request and within seven hours, you will uh, be get, get access to your API key as well. So I just, uh, ask you that needs to submit a request to get the API key and within seven hours, you will have the access to API key. So it's very simple. And here I will just add my API key over here. So now I will just using Google Palm embedding. So I told you Google Palm comes with uh, Google Palm uh, comes with its own embedding house model as well. And you will be using Google Palm embedding model over here. So it says that I have not installed this package. Okay, so let's install this package over here as well. So now I will just run this cell. So we are just downloading embeddings from Google Palm embeddings and those embeddings are saved in the variable Google. Palm embedding. So now let me just check the length of those embeddings. So the length is 768. So I will just go to pine point from here. So uh, you can just get a paste subscription from pine point. It allows us to build, uh, to have ve multiple vector database inside the pine point. So I don't have a paid subscription on pine point. So I can only create one vector database. Okay. So with the uh, paid subscription, you can create multiple vector databases. So I've already created one. So I will just delete this and create a new index over here. So you can just create index. Okay, so now you can see that our length is 768 over here. Just copy this and add here and just create an index over here. So currently it's initializing. So this might take uh, two to three minutes to get ready. So, okay, so here I've just passed my Pinecone API key. So you can just get your API key from here. This is your API key. 
okay and this is your name of environment okay so just you need to pass the pinecone api key pinecone api environment over here okay and let's go to the indexing it's initializing so as it gets ready then you will just uh, go ahead okay so let's wait until it's get ready and you can see the green signal it's mean it's ready and you can see the dimension 768 over here and the, my region is asia so if you are using uh, living in us once in your uh, europe so your uh, environment over here the region will be different as well okay so i'm just using a free index free tire over here and you can see that uh, it's monthly cost zero but it i can just only create one index so you can just get the paid description from pinecone as well and you can just create multiple indexes and it will just store my uh, database vectors so it will store my data for one week okay because it's a free index so if you have a paid description then it can store the data for a longer period of time and it will not be deleted as well okay and plus make sure that your dimension is 768 which you can find over here this is the dimension of your embedding model as well so now i'm just passing my api key and just setting up the environment over here and here i'm just passing my index name so you can see your index name over here so this is the index name so you just need to copy this from here and add this index name over here as well so let's run this as well so now i'm just creating a bedding for each of the text chunk so here over here what i'm doing is that i'm just going through each of the text chunks and just creating embeddings for each of the text chunk so what we are doing here is that we are just creating a bedding for each of the text chunk this is the steps which is being performed over here so so over here i'm just creating uh i'm just initialized index over here and just uh, saving my embeddings into this uh, uh, pinecone clouds. Okay, so I'm just saving those embeddings in a pinecone a vector database. So what's over happening over is that we are getting embedding for each of the text chunk, and then we are just saving our embeddings into a pinecone the vector database. So our embeddings will be saved into this index over here. Okay, so if you have already saved your embeddings in a pinecone vector database, so then you can just call this uh, cell because currently we are saving our embeddings in a pinecone a vector database so i will just not call this cell currently but if you have already saved your embeddings in a pinecone cloud vector database then you will just need to run this cell so you can see that the cell has run successfully and you can see over here uh, we have saved our embeddings over here in pinecone uh, our index so you now you can see over here we have saved all those embeddings into this index and you can see over here it goes from 1 to 50 pages so uh that's good and in each page we have 10 rows and it goes up to 50 rows okay so it goes up to 50 rows and in each page we have 10 rows plus uh now you can see that i've just saved my embeddings into this uh pinecone index over here so in any case, if I just want, if I just uh, reopen this notebook again and I want to use these embeddings which I have saved over here. So what I will do is you can just run this cell over here and you can just comment out this cell. Okay. And you can just run this cell. Okay. So this is how it works. If you just reopen this notebook after a week. So you, if you want to just assess those embeddings, then you can just run this cell and skip this cell. Okay, so now I will just ask first question. So I've just asked Yola V7 outperforms which model? Okay, so here what we are doing is that we are doing similarity search. So what we are doing over here is that uh, when the user asks a question, we create embeddings for that question and then we do a similarity search. So I will just try to find top four answers for this question from the knowledge base. So over here I'm doing the same thing. Uh, here we are doing semantic search or similarity search. I am trying to find top four answers for this question. So I have defined k is equal to four. You can define k is equal to one, three, five as well. So these are the top four answers which we have got for this question. One, one is this, second, third, fourth. So here you can see figure nine comparison with our object detector, figure 10 comparison with real time object detectors, 
precision IV threshold. So if I just set A is equal to three, so I will just get top three answers for this question. Now you can see this is the first, this is the second, this is the third, okay? So what we have done, the user has asked a question. We have done pretty, pretty embeddings for that question. And then we have done a semantic search. We try to find top four answers or top three answers for that question from our knowledge base. Then we will try to rank those answers and then we'll set the, the, the responses to our uh, Palm 2 model and Palm 2 model will uh, have the question directly as well and it will generate a natural response. Okay. So here I'm just creating a Palm 2 uh, Google Palm model wrapper over here. Okay. So now what we are doing is that I've just passed those answers which we have sold uh, over here. You can see over here, we have just passed those answers over here. We have such chain type as stuff and we have just passed a uh, Google Palm 2 model over here. And let's, uh, you can just skip this custom prompts for now. What we can do over here is I will just write ULO v7 uh, outperforms each model. So now we are using retrieval QA so that we can retrieve answers from our uh, vector database, knowledge database, and using Palm 2 model, which will generate a non natural response. So if I just run this now, this is a very quickly generated response. So you can see ULO v7 outperform ULO v4 CSV. And if I just ask Rachel uh, Green qualification, you can say that uh, it's, she's PhD in English and Rachel Green experience. Rachel Green has experience as a graduate teaching assistant. And if you can just run this while loop and you can do a question answer over here as well. Okay, so if I just write uh, YOLO V7 is used for, YOLO V7 is used for object detection. Rachel Green uh, job, uh, uh, job experience. Includes a uh, game experience include being a doctor session at the Department of English. And if I just write exit from here, it will just close it up. Okay, so now you can define your custom prompt over here as well. For more details, you can just go to retrieval QA from chain type. Uh, this documentation you can check the lang chain documentation and you can just find more details about custom prompt over here. Okay, so I will just give you a quick overview of custom prompt over here. So here you can find we have we have find our prompt template and I'm just writing use the following pieces of question a contest to answer the question. Please provide a detailed response for each of the question. And where we have that contest, the user has provided the question. And I want the answer in Italian. Okay, I don't want the answer in English. I don't want the answer in Italian language. So I will just run this cell. I'm just creating a prompt template over here. Here with the input, I have context and question. So I've just defined this over here. Okay, so now what I am doing over here is that I'm just uh, passing the prompt which we have created over here. Okay, and let's I ask this question, YOLO v7 outperforms which model and let's see if we are able to get the answer in Italian or not. So you, now you can see that I'm just getting the answer in Italian, YOLO v7, Supera, I, Seguenti, Modli. So you can see that I'm just getting the answer in Italian. So with the help of custom prompt, we can just getting the answer in Italian as well. So you can just the custom prompt as per your requirements. So that's all from this tutorial. Thank you for watching. See you all in the next part.